Welcome back to Border Life. Over the last month, Sandy has been exploring the winter landscape in the south of Scotland through a series of walks that make the most of the season. In the last of them, he finds out about a legendary poet and his Russian descendant. To round off our winter walks, we're heading to Elston. The community are very proud of an extensive network of paths all around the village, and we'll be following one of their most well-trodden routes that run alongside the banks of the Leader Water. It's good to get a bit of refreshment to start any walk, and this roadside cafe is just the spot. But hidden in its garden is a monument to a mysterious past, the remains of an old tower house. Back in the 11th century, these ruins were the home of the Laird Sir Thomas Learmond of Eckrell Doon, better known as Thomas the Rhymer, a poet and alleged prophet who legend says spent time in the land of the fairies, just outside Melrose. His story extends far outside the borders and is signified by a statue in Elston Village Green. I met local expert Robert Turnbull to find out more. Robert, how did a statue of a Russian poet end up here in Elston? Well, it's a long story. The Russian poet Lermontov uh, was descended, it's claimed, from Thomas the Rhymer. As in Mikhail was born in 1814 in Moscow. He was a very famous poet in Russia. He claimed that he had the powers of prophecy, as had uh, Thomas the Rhymer, and one of the prophecies was that the Romanov uh, dynasty would come to an end, which of course did happen in 1917. He died at a very early age, he was killed in a duel. He never came to Scotland, he had a longing for Scotland, and the family, his descendants, decided that they would like to commemorate his bicentenary by commissioning this bust which was then donated to the village of Elston. Can you tell us a little bit about the sculpture itself? What, what does it represent? Well, the sculpture was uh, commissioned and created in, in Russia and then shipped over to this country. And the design is such that uh, that's the heart of the chest of, so that was where Lemontov's heart really lay in Scotland. And then on the side you see the, the raven's feathers, which is, again is a symbol of the flight of birds. And um, that was one of the themes of some of his poetry. Leaving Lermontov behind, the road takes us southwards out of Elston. We head into the woods along the first part of the trail known as Speedy's Path. This brings us out on the banks of the river and the impressive facade of Cowdenow's house. The mansion once famously played host to Mary Queen of Scots, but these days it's an upmarket cell catering B and B. Cowdenhouse marks the spot where the path splits in two, giving walkers the chance to explore both banks of the Leader Water. The fact we can access so much of this countryside is in a large part thanks to the volunteers of the Elston Paths Group. It's a year-round job, and even in winter they're out clearing the pathway. We were formed in 2005, and really for the past 18 years, we've just maintained these paths. We created quite a few of them, and we opened up paths that uh, had been forgotten about, and made sure they were signposted, really just to get as many people as we could out into the countryside, because it's beautiful around here. The only trouble is when you're out walking uh, with the dog, you're always eyeing up, there's a broken step, there's another bit that needs fixed. Uh, so some of the enjoyment goes because you're always on survey. You're always on the clock, but you can still enjoy the nature. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. It's a lot of hard work, but is it worth it when you see the reactions of people coming here to walk the paths? Oh, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of uh, local ownership in the paths, and that's good, but it takes us hours and hours over the year. Hundreds of hours, I would say. 
Most people will, will walk past and you may be drenched in sweat. Especially for us. <laughs> and they'll tell you, you're doing a great job. And that goes some way to uh, mitigating all the effort you put in. One of the group's most dedicated members is former local GP Sheena, who can often be found jogging along the routes that she helps maintain. I don't think I would run if I had to run on roads. You know, I run because I enjoy being off-road and on the trail. I've lived here for over 25 years. I was the local GP in the village and we started prescribing exercise to patients and very quickly we became aware of a growing uh, number of paths around the area so anyone of any ability can use the path. So I just became gradually more and more um, interested in trying to promote them and promote them to people from out with the area uh, to say, you know, come here and see what we've got here because it's an amazing resource. And walking, even in winter, it's really good for your well-being, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely. I think a mental health, physical health, just makes you feel better. I mean, you know, it can be a dreadful, dismal day, but you get outside, you go, I would go out for a run, I bring my dogs, I meet people out here, meet people from the local community, and it just, um, it, it just has a huge benefit. And it's not that every area has it. I thought, you know, most places would have lots of a path network, but out running one day, I spoke to a lady who'd come from Perthshire to, to walk on the paths here because the place she'd moved to didn't have as good access to the countryside. So we're very, very lucky here. And a great credit to a huge number of volunteers and fundraisers that have helped keep it all going. The dedication of this band of volunteers show how much this landscape and the paths through it mean to local folks. So much so that just off the path, the views looking up at the Black Hill, is a wooden sculpture of a pair of walking boots in honour of the Elston Pass co-founder, Jack Jones. It bears the words of a song by folk singer Mark McGinn, which seemed very apt in this contemplative corner of the countryside. When I die, bury me low where I can hear the bunny tweet flow A sweeter place I never did know The rolling hills of the borders The paths along the leader water give walkers plenty of options. A sedate route along the west bank through fields or the slightly more challenging Jubilee Path, which climbs up to give us great views back up the valley. Both paths converge where the leader water runs into the mighty Tweed, with the iconic Leaderfoot Viaduct, the ideal spot, to round off this well-maintained path in our series of seasonal walks. Seeing the winter sun hit these red sandstone pillars shows how much the outdoor spaces of the south of Scotland change with the seasons and how walking is a great way to immerse ourselves in these landscapes. Among the hills of the borders When I die, bury me low Where I can hear the money tweet flow A sweeter place I never did know The rolling hills of the borders